Founded in 1791, the Albany Institute of History and Art is one of the oldest museums in the United States. The Institute started as the Society for the Promotion of Agriculture, Arts, and Manufactures, founded in New York City in Federal Hall. Supported by the New York State Legislature, to which it served as an informational advisor, the Society met to improve the state's economy through advances in agricultural methods and manufacturing technologies. In accordance with the condition that they meet where the legislature convened, the Society moved to Albany in 1797 when it became the state capital. The Institute's museum and library holdings form the best collections in the United States, documenting the life and culture of the upper Hudson Valley region from the late 17th century to the present day. Although the Institute is famous for its significant Hudson River School paintings, the broad scope of its collections includes fine arts, furnishings, personal objects, documents, manuscripts, photographs, and personal papers used by people of all ages, social classes, economic conditions, and cultural groups. The 1909 acquisition of two mummies from a dig near Luxor, Egypt, has remained a popular fixture of the Institute's permanent exhibitions. Other important holdings in the Institute's collections include the works of Albany artist Ezra Ames and the family artwork and belongings of Catherine Lansing Gansford. Housed in a number of buildings, including, during the 1790s, Albany City Hall, and in the late 1890s, a building on State Street, the oldest part of the current structure was designed by the Albany architectural firm of Albert W. Fuller and William B. Pitcher. It was dedicated and opened in 1907 as a museum for the people. In 1968, the Institute acquired the adjacent William Gorham Rice House, allowing the museum to enlarge its offices and collection space. And in 2001, the new connecting building was opened. This video is dedicated to Norman Rice, who was associated with the Institute for nearly 70 years, starting as curator in 1953. He was executive director of the museum from 1967 until 1986, during which time he grew its collections, expanded its focus, and forged important relationships that helped secure its future growth. Norman enjoyed all of the arts and was particularly fond of arts presented in a historical context.
runs away and the bird is strange. The wind has dropped and the sky is deranged. changing you. 